All right, we have a quorum. So let's get started. It is 531. Welcome everyone to the March meeting of the Hadley Public Schools. Do I have a motion to open the meeting? So moved. I can it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent. Annie, can you take us through any adjustments to the agenda? Yes, the adjustments to the agenda are uh, given the fact that our entire team cannot be here tonight. We will focus on action items only this evening. Um, we will move, we will discuss all action items except the capital plan, which there's no pressing need to discuss that this evening and revote it. We'll do that in April. All discussion items of the capital plan will be to April. I do want to say to you, uh, also that our student reps are not here because they are rehearsing. And if I may read this, because I must make sure that we all know, which we should attend, Hopkins Academy drama program to perform Clue on stage. So please come and join our students and our community for an evening of mystery, murder, and frivolity. The Hopkins Academy Theater Arts Club is producing the play Clue on stage, inspired by the board game of the same name. This is a hilarious farce, and all the characters with whom you are familiar, Colonel Mustard, Mrs. Peacock, and the rest of them, along with the butler, need to unravel a mystery of who did it, where, and with what. The performances are Friday and Saturday nights, March 29th, that's this Friday and Saturday, March 29th and 30th, and also April 5th and 6th. They begin at 6 p.m. at Hopkins Academy, uh, general admission is $15. You may purchase tickets at the door. Cash or check are accepted. It's $12 for seniors and students. So good reason. They've been doing nothing but rehearsing for a long time. Sounds fabulous. I definitely would like to attend. And if any of my school committee colleagues would like to go with me, send me a text. Um, I really enjoyed the, the last drama performance that I went to with Tara. Um, and yes, I'm all in. Thank you. Sure. Okay, um, let's begin with public comment. I don't, so I'm not sure if we have members of the public here, but if we do and you'd like to make a comment, please limit it to three minutes. Something pertinent to the agenda would be ideal. And um, please raise your digital hand if you're interested in making a comment and we will unmute you. Okay, seeing none. Let's move forward with the presentation and discussion items. Item 4A, summary of changes to the Hopkins Academy program of studies. Um, yes, seeing as the school committee had the materials in advance, I know Ms. Camuso is here to answer questions. Should anyone have them? Of course, you can also move to the board. Very good. Um, does anyone have any questions on the changes to the program of studies? Okay, um, I do have one quick question, and that is, um, I noticed that the number of credits went up pretty measurably. To what do you attribute, um, like what key areas shored up their credit requirements to have that substantial bump? So just to clarify, is, is the question why the credits increased? Um, it's more like what areas, what, you know, was it social studies that was missing two classes out of four or so, English or? No. So it has to do with the schedule. So because the schedule shifted, they now take 40 credits because that, those, um, those short, remember those 45 minute classes that they had that were less credits because we took those all and put them all into longer blocks. Now each of those eight courses is five credits. So they automatically have five more credits into their schedule. Um, and for that one, we didn't add any additional requirements. All the requirements stayed the same. They just got put into the optional category of what they could take, but it didn't change any of their required courses. Those changes had already been made last year. Um, I think the last additional requirement we made last year was the fourth science class, which they can take an elective or a standard core class. Um, so no additional requirements, just the shift to 40 credits a year instead. Excellent. Thank you so much. All right. That was it for me. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? Okay. Seeing none, let's uh, proceed, entertain a motion to approve the uh, program of studies for the academic year 2024-2025. Uh, 
So moved. Okay. Do you hear a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes with four of us. Um, and of course, one um, uh, committee member uh, absent. All right, moving on to um, item B, the Hopkins Academy field trip to uh, Panama in April of 2025. Um, and that's you, Senora. And I would say similarly, oh. the school committee has materials. I just wanna take out the hook here. They do have all of your materials, Senora. Um, so if folks have questions, um, I know you know, it's the same company you've used before. Yes. Are there any questions for Senora on the um, proposed trip to Panama? I, Ruth Ann, you know, this, it, this looks great. And I know I've heard, I've always heard good things about your trips. Um, it's just, a, just your experience, Ruth Ann, you've done this a lot about uh, kids that are interested, pain, you know, the typical questions we ask is there, how does that working out these days or, the folks who want to go, are they able to afford it? And so I saw you doing fundraising, you're, you're proposing partnering with Smith Academy. Academy. I'm just wondering how that's been working out over the last few years. Um, yeah, actually, we have done a lot of fundraising. And I think there have been kids who probably would not have been able to go had we not taken them on. Um, I'm always searching for the way for ev actually every single person to go and not have any money as an issue. But um I'm sure that, to be honest, I'm sure there are people who are not going because of money, but I would say it's limited and we do offer loads of fun fundraising. Excellent. Any other questions for Senora? Um, will you be doing those scones again? Because those are really good. If I yeah. throw that out there, I'm going to pre-order. <laughs> okay, yes. we. Those are fantastic. <laughs> If we if we partner with Smith Academy again, and I'm not sure if that's something I need to have approval from you all about too. Um, we partnered with them before, and it was uh, great great success. They have the same attitude as we do. They have the same rules as we do, um, and and it just helped it helped the kids be able to afford it because the price went down when it was more people. So yeah. yes, I I'm hoping to partner with them. Excellent, excellent, and let us know about the scones. Or any fundraising. Remind, remind exactly. me, have you gone to Panama before? No, this is a new one. So. Yep, yeah, it is. Um, uh, The Smith group has been, as a matter of fact, they're going in nine days. I think they're going in April vacation this year. They've been, and uh, it seems to be one of their favorites. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I got to say, I love it. I've been there twice. Last time I was there, I walked out of my room. There's a sloth hanging there. I love <laughs> it. Kids are going to love it. Awesome. Yeah. I've heard great things. Um, it's on my bucket list. So, yeah. so happy to see you taking the students there. Thank you. All right. Well, let's um, uh, see if there's a motion to approve the proposed trip to Panama in April 2025. So moved. Is there a Seconded. second? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Thank you, Senora. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. All right. Moving on down the agenda. Um, we are next uh, engaging in our required public hearing about the fiscal year 25 budget, along with regional data that Annie McKenzie will take us through. Annie. Sure. So one, I want to say that there has been no change in financial data from the Febu February presentation of the budget to the school committee. I am, however, happy to report, although it's not reflected in this document at this time, but I'm happy to report that our enrollment has increased this year. Um, our October 1 total enrollment was 503 students. Our current enrollment is 526 students. So a net increase of 23 students since October 1 this school year alone. And we are still getting people who are calling. Of those 23 students, I will say that the majority of them are Hadley residents. So we have seen a return from some of the private schools here and even uh, from some charters to Hadley Public Schools. So we are grateful to have our families here and really appreciate it. In addition to the FY25 budget document, which again, you have previously seen and there's no change financially to that, Chris and I did present it to uh, the town of Hadley's finance committee 
um, and they were very supportive and did not have a lot of questions or and had no concerns. But in addition to that, a document I also shared with them, which is linked into the agenda, is information on budget increases throughout the Commonwealth. It's not every single district, but there are a number of districts listed. As you can see, increases range from roughly 13% all the way down to just about 1%, less than 1%, but rounded up. And the average increase is close to 5%, as is the median increase. Uh, Hadley is requesting a 1.88% in local revenues, and you can see stacked up against increases throughout the Commonwealth that uh, the budget proposal to the town is conservative in that regard. Uh, as I said, we did take uh, the finance committee through this information and I wanted you all to have it. So nothing has changed, but this is the official vote of the school committee for the budget at its public hearing. That is excellent that we're coming in at 1.88, Annie. Um, that is a number that is lower than what we originally saw, was it not? Correct. And I want to be clear, the total budget has increased, the total budget has increased by closer to 4%. But all of these numbers, the question I asked was increase to local contribution. I so see. what is the effect on the town? So total right. operating budget in Hadley and in these towns, where you see that increase, that's local increase. Their total budget could be higher than that. Um, I see. This is what they're asking their towns for an increase of. We originally asked the town for an increase of 375 and as we had, they had indicated that all of the asks from every department exceeded projected available revenues. And they asked every single department to reduce their request. And they gave us a target number, asked us essentially to reduce it roughly by half. And there was a number of ways that we were able to get there. And the town helped us to get there. Uh, for example, they originally had asked us to cost share a new HR system, which they've decided not to move forward with in the next fiscal year. There were some other things regarding tuitions that worked out in our favor, which was So it is less than in January, it's a 3.75 increase to local. But after the town asked us to do that, what you saw in February is what we're still seeing now. Excellent. I'm, I'm really glad to hear that, that we were able to um, come in under the um, under the requested amount. Um, really great news. Um, any other questions for Annie um, on this uh, budget uh, pro proposal as well as the increase in comparisons? I appreciate the the work put in to sort of lay this out so that we can see and the public can see how we compare to other places. So thank you for that. I think it makes that visual helps um, when you're, you know, discussing the budget and what, how we compare to other places. And I'm glad you, I will mm -hmm. add this as well. Very many, I don't want to say the majority, but what is not included here is that even with those increases that I think I would say a fair number, a lot, and you've read this in the paper, of the districts had the increase, but they also had to lay off or reduce mm -hmm. a lot of positions. You've seen this all around here. It's been in the paper. So I didn't have everybody's notes. People in every district put in notes, but we also are not doing a reduction in force. Um, and whereas that's pretty widespread right now. Any other questions for Annie? I do. Annie, yeah, as usual, very well presented. I can you walk us through just that uh, school choice table on page seven? Thanks. Sure thing. Hmm. Let's get to page seven. The revenues apply to the budget? Yeah. Correct. So yeah. What's important there is you can see that, which it's, it's I'm glad that people are paying attention to this because you probably also read and heard in surrounding districts that over-reliance on school choice has created some fiscal problems for them in the FY25 budget. And you can see that we it's one of the ways that we also were able to get down to the target number that the town gave us, right? As we are allocating more school choice funding into the operating budget, that has grown year over year. However, on page eight, it's really important to pay attention to is if we're using more money, is this also tracking with our school choice enrollment. And actually we have at least 
three more. That might be up to 127 right now. It might be 128. We've even had additional school choice students enter throughout this year, mid-year. Um, so what we don't want to see is that we're using incre increasing amounts of school choice money while our school choice enrollments are declining, right? We want these things to track somewhat similarly. Yeah. So we did use considerably more we've allocated, but that also is in response to the request uh, from the town to reduce the ask, which they asked us to do that, not because they don't support the schools, they support the schools very, very much. The reality is everybody needs things. We are one department among many, and um, they are also facing their own kind of revenue things they're trying to sort out. Excellent. Excellent. Any other questions for Annie on the budget? Okay. Seeing none, do I hear a motion to approve the fiscal year 25 budget? So moved. Any second? Seconded. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion passes. Thank you, Annie. Thanks, Annie. Thanks, Chris. All right. We're going to move next to uh, the selection of the designer for the locker room project. And Chris, are you with us? Okay. Yes, I am here. Right. Um, so we had three submissions for the locker room designer. Um, I sent the uh, submissions to all of you last week so you could review on your own time. And this afternoon, I also sent um, kind of a comparison that just picked some highlighted items um, from there. Um, <clears throat> from their submissions, just to give, um, you know, a comparison of years in business, um, how many related projects they've had in the past five years, which would be, you know, something from a municipality or a school district. Um, they all included examples of recent locker room projects that they've done in the past several years. So two of them had three. Um, one of them, CHA, had nine uh, locker rooms. Um also, just the, the number of personnel that they have at their disposal, <clears throat> which may just give um, an idea to you of their ability to get the project done you know, in a timely manner. Um, and also just the years of experience for both the project manager and the project principal, um, which are all, I mean, it's not like there's anybody with six months of experience here. They're all um, you know, very experienced people and all of the firms have been in business for I think the newest one was 39 years. So, um, you know, certainly uh, we, we've gotten some good proposals from them. And oops. So, I, I, you know, at this point in time, I just open it up for questions or discussion. Uh, if anybody would like to just start. Great. Thank you, Chris. Any questions for Chris on the three proposals? Just to be clear, Chris, this is like um, we did with the fields. We need to recommend one. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, I could state my opinion, but if others have questions, I'll, I'll defer until you get the questions out of the way. I do not have questions, but I do want to commend you on sourcing three, what seems like very viable uh, and strong proposals. Um, so we're, we're in a good position to be able to choose from three and your uh, the assessments that you've drawn about years of experience and size. I, I think all of those um are equally sound i think um the uh the firm that had a lot more employees i i'd want i'd be worried that we would kind of get lost as a customer amongst the really large firm i think that was the only hesitation i had that a small firm might be able to deliver better but i i really um would welcome your perspective on uh on right. which uh, proposed, uh, you know, which which proposal stood out to you? I'm sorry, Mary, were you speaking to me or to the committee? Uh, I'm speaking to you. Yeah. Oh, okay. I would welcome. I will. I would welcome your perspective. And you may want to share that after. Maybe Paul shares his perspective. Paul, you said you mentioned you had comments on the. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Humer. I think Christy did a great job. Those mm -hmm. are all very well qualified. You know, some of the things I was thinking through as I read through, one is more local than the other. So that was, I was supportive of that. Um, 
um, what to me, I really, because they all seem so very well qualified, have lots of experience. I really parsed out how they wrote the narrative in their uh, project approach and their schedule. Um, and to me, one kind of st stood out for a couple of reasons. So CHA did stand out. And I think that is the one with the large number of employees that the project schedule was the most detailed, mm -hmm. which I appreciated, you know, having, I manage a lot of projects uh, and having somebody taking the time to think through that. Of course, we're not always going to stick to that exactly, but I, I really uh, appreciate their itemization. The schedule. I appreciate their collaborative nature. They really talked about paying, paying attention to uh, the client and meeting with the client to understand the client. The others mentioned that as well. I thought their language and their approach was just a little bit more um, than the others, a bit more intentionally collaborative. And knowing that we're going to have to do this with essentially an HVAC process already going on, he's like, well, I want somebody that can make sure they can work across. So for what it's worth um, to me that CHA was uh, you know, eked out a little bit. That said, uh, it's not like they're clearly not the only ones who can do this. If others have strong opinions, definitely willing to, to discuss those. I, I think all of them were impressive. My, I agree a little bit more with um, Humira on the, um, you know, the, they are such a large firm. I do like the fact that, um, you know, there is a local company that has done work that we can actually go see. Um, and, but other than that, I, I don't think we can really go wrong. <laughs> yes. Appreciate your comments there. Um, Chris, when we uh, were talking about this last, we stated that it would be ideal if we had the same designer project manager as the firm that took on our um, our HVAC project. Uh, can you tell from this juncture um, which firm is most likely to put in for that? Um, and does that factor into our decision-making or your decision-making? Well, we've already approved CHA to be the vendor for the, uh, for the HVAC project. Um, and uh, to be honest, I agreed with what Paul said about the presentations, <clears throat> excuse me. I mean, it was great to go through them because all of them were very comprehensive, I have to say. Mm. Um, but in all honesty, I loved the fact that CHA included that project timeline because it really just gave us the impression that, Oh, wow. So this is, you know, more or less, I mean, obviously there are delays on, on either side, you know, for whatever reason, but um, it pretty much gave us a timeline that we can expect on when things would be done. That takes a lot of, for lack of a better term, headache away from me um, to have to worry about, geez, how long is this going to take? You know, um, that gave me the perfect impression of how long it would take. Um, and it, it really gave me the thought of if they're putting a pro proposal like this together, um, it certainly made me feel comfortable with the job they would do, um, you know, for the design work. I will also say that the project manager is attending this meeting tonight from that particular firm. Um, I'm not sure if there's one from another firm here as well, but um, there there could be. I'm not sure who this other no, person no, is. No, that's uh, an employee of Hadley Public School. Okay, yeah. okay, then no. So so they did have someone come and attend this meeting, which I thought was was pretty good as well. Agreed. Um, well, given that uh, CHA has already proposed um, the engineering, you know, it's already been selected to do the engineering work for the HVAC, I think that would really be a smart move for us to make sure that our, uh, that the designs were being done by someone, mm -hmm. you know, an entity that had knowledge of both systems and could integrate the pathways of the schedule and ensure that there was no, um, redundancy taking place, redundant work. Um, so despite being large, I mean, many large firms have small practices that, you know, are able to, uh, to be very effective. Uh, I think that could also be a plus in some respects. So I would be willing to support uh, CHA receiving uh, this, uh, this proposal uh, approval. Um, any other questions or thoughts from my colleagues on this? 
Seeing none, do I hear a motion to approve the CHA bid for our locker room project? Right, all Removed. And a second? Second. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion passes. Thank you, Chris, for Thank you. Uh, thanks, Chris. a successful bid proposal selection process. And thank you, the other, other bidders. Has, uh, sorry. I was just going to say, it doesn't look like the other bidders are on, but just a note, I know it's a lot of work to put these bids together, so we appreciate their response. And it's, um, I think you're right, Jumeirah, that, that synergy potentially between both projects would be huge. And hopefully we can get some efficiencies and cost savings with by doing that. Thanks. Sorry, Annie. No worries. I just realized that we may need to uh, revote with the specific figures on the FY25. Is that what you'd like us to do, Chris Desjardins? Um, Is that necessary? I, I had originally sent out an email with, you know, what I considered to be a good motion, and then no, all those of were FY24. Of, yeah, panic came through me when I realized I looked. I was trying to quickly do it while you were discussing it, and I looked at the wrong year column. Okay. So, and that's why I quickly yeah. sent an email out. You know, as presented, it will be fine. We can just as presented. It. Okay, I will state it just so it's on the record. What was voted, what was presented, is a okay. total budget, and I am rounding a total budget here for FY25 of the school department of nine million six hundred and thirty-five thousand nineteen dollars, and a local contribution of seven million eight hundred and ninety-three um, thousand nine hundred and ninety. Excellent. Thank you for clarifying. Okay. So no need for another motion, but I'm glad that's just as presented. That is what was presented. Thank Excellent. you. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, let's keep moving. Um, we are at the business manager report. And again, in light of the fact that we're one person down and um uh, we we have some folks we may lose in a short while. Uh, it's up to you how much detail you want to take us through as it relates to expense, revolving, and grants. Chris, um, feel free to take it away, and uh, we look forward to a more in-depth report again in, in the April timeframe. Um, so please take us through your business manager report. Sure. Okay. I mean, the expense report, really, you know, not a lot to report. Uh, you know, we've we've moved some items that were posted incorrectly into the correct accounts, um, made some transfers to grants, uh, you know, from the general fund. Um, this puts us pretty much in line to to finish the year um, with a, you know, possibly a slight um, amount left over. Um, so that that's certainly in good shape. Um, with the revolving accounts, the only thing I wanted to point out in those is that the lunch account showed a negative balance of 5000 roughly $5,800. Um, and that is basically we've had two deposits um, that were not posted yet when I ran the accounts. Um, so there was a January update and then the February deposit were not posted. So um, that, that will bring it um, back to a balance of about $25,000. Uh, so, you know, just, I just wanted to fill you in so you didn't look and say, oh my God, we're, we're in the negative here. Sometimes I'm just at the mercy of when these items are posted on the town side. So, um, like the old days, Chris. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yes. Um, and then for the grants, you know, you can see there were further expenses made to the grants. Uh, still a decent amount more to spend on them, but we will continue um, to to post expenses to them. And as always, you know, utilize every every bit of the grant money that we can. So, um, and, and that's really all I have, unless anyone has any questions. Any questions for Chris? Okay, seeing none, let's move to the last item in your report. Oh, and the district I... cook. Yes. Yes, so um, the, we have a district cook. We did a survey, um, a couple of surveys actually, um, on the food quality of the food services program in the schools and got a lot of great feedback um, from the students on what they like, what they don't like. Um, and as a result of that, we have a district cook who was basically working out of Hopkins and the meals were cooked at Hopkins and brought over to HES. Um, and it was requested that, well, not requested, but noted that the food quality might improve if it was actually cooked on premises instead of cooked ahead of time and brought over. Um, so because the job description said that 
uh, the district cook would be working out of the Hopkins location. We just revised that basically to uh, to have it where um, you know she could be working out of either location. Excellent. Any questions for Chris on this? Seeing none, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the district cook job description um, as presented. So moved. I can end. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, so, okay. so Chris, how, how does that work? That they might work in either place? As yeah, the way we scheduled it is um, she's going to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at HES okay. and Thursday, Friday at Hopkins. Okay. Um, we just started actually getting the pizzas um, brought in from Papa John's instead of the ones that we had. Pizza was a, a big complaint item with the students. So um, so we, we reached out and got a vendor um, that could supply those for us. Um, and, and also flavor of the food. Kids want salt. Sadly, we really can't give them salt, but we are going to have uh, what we're calling a flavor station in each building where we will have um, like a Mrs. Dash type of seasoning instead of salt, pepper, ranch dressing, you know, et cetera, um, for flavoring the food, you know, a little bit more. And hopefully that will help as well. This is all starting on April 1st, um, you know, both the cooking in both schools and uh, the flavor stations. So, um, you know, tell the kids they, they should uh, like their meals a lot more in a couple of weeks. I just have to say, I, I'm really pleased that we're asking the students. I, I've heard some grumblings from my own three. Um, and I uh, appreciate the attention that's being paid to um, bringing flavors. I've been doing a lot of reading on ways you can flavor food without salt that involves lemon, herbs, uh, tahini, you know, a whole host of different ways um, that go back centuries. So I really appreciate our own um, team looking at those ways. Thanks. Any other yeah, questions? Yeah, the survey was, oh, I'm please. sorry, what? No, no, please. Okay, I was just gonna say the survey was done by the wellness committee. Um, and, and so that, you know, obviously was a big help. We also did one among the food services staff um, just to get their take on, you know, do you have everything you need to do your job? You know, all, all kinds of questions like that, just to really make sure we can tweak the program as, as good as we can. Excellent. Any I other questions? Yeah, please, Chris. Yeah, I, I literally jumped right over this and then I went back after you'd made a comment about um, HES. So where it says prepares the alternate alternate meal for Hopkins with necessary assistance, was that is that supposed to still be in there or is that supposed to be taken out? Uh, that's a very good question. I I would say um, uh, this drives me crazy, but I I really think that it probably should say for the district. Okay. I, I, if, if can we just, just do a, a, a you know a motion with an amendment to change that for the district? Yes, um, I'll entertain a motion to approve the district cook job de description as presented with the modification of removing or replacing Hopkins by um, with for the school district. So moved. Then Aye. all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, motion passes. Thank you again, Chris. Thank you. Okay, we are, uh, let's see, we're at action items and I think we've approved all the ones that are listed here except for the minutes. Correct, that's all you have left. Okay, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes of fe the February 26th meeting? So moved. And second? Second. Thank you, Paul. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Excellent, thank you. Um, school committee updates and general announcements. We're going to keep it light. Would love to hear about the playground. Tara, can you take us through um, both the uh, CPAC and CES um, part of your uh, update as well? Yeah. So um, CPAC, the mooting, mo meeting, excuse me, for March was moved to April. So I don't have any updates for this month. For this month. Um, CES, we are meeting on um, Wednesday, 
I have to think I was thinking it was next week. It was this week on Wednesday. Um, we're meeting. So I'll have an update. We haven't had the meeting um, in January or February. So it's the first meeting of the new year, March. Um, and we're meeting this Wednesday. So I'll have an update in April for that. Um, and I'll send out the information when I get that as well, just so that you can review ahead of time. Um, the playground. So I had Annie attach a document and um, I don't know if you've had a chance to read it, but um, what I'll do is I'll try to add on to this every time so that you can kind of see um, the continuity of where we um, where we are now versus where we are two months from now or whatnot. Um, so we have been reaching out to um, potential donors and requesting donations. Um, a lot of our focus thus far has been on kind of some of the bigger donors. So I think forget if I mentioned last um, last meeting, we did secure fifty thousand from um, Belize and Steve Lewis Subaru. So we are going to be um, receiving that on. Thursday, we'll be getting a check presentation. Um, myself, Jen, Cloud, and the principal at Hadley Elementary, as well as um, PTO representatives will be there. I don't know if anybody else is going or not, but I know those groups will be there um, to receive that check. Um, we have gotten our secured um, yet to receive a pledge of $10,000 from people. So we're really excited and thankful um, for them. We have submitted to several other banks. Um, several other banks have indicated to us that they're very excited to help out. We have not gotten um, the um, donation amount, but that's in the works, right, as we speak. Um, and we did submit to East Hampton Savings Bank, and I've been told that we're approved, but they haven't disclosed the amount yet. So hopefully next year we will have a better idea of that. Um, and so and we've been reaching out to other um, local companies around to get donations. So we've had a lot of um, people also say that, yes, they're willing to donate. And some of the smaller places have not disclosed them. So as those keep coming in, I'm will be updating everybody. Um, and surely we'll be making sure that we'll be able to recognize some of these donors as well. Um, the public forum uh, here or on social media or whatnot, if they're... Um, if they approve of that, of course. Um, so we are going to have a table set up for donations at the hot dog, the 5K run that's being done by Park and Rec. Um, we have one parent who's been very active. And so she is willing to help solicit for donations while she's there at the hot dog run work. So that'll be there. Um, we're going to have a Venmo. Um, I think those be at the scan codes. Um, I forget what they're called. I'm very not savvy with those. Um, but there will be one of those barcode things that people will be able to scan and make a donation directly while they're there. So hopefully we'll be able to do some of in that way. Um, when we met a few weeks ago as a group, there was discussion about coordinating a fundraising event. People are interested in doing like a bingo night. Um, so hopefully more to come on that. We're going to be meeting again next week um, to talk about kind of who's going to run it, when it's going to, all the details about, you know, who, what, where. Um, so more to come on that, but it will be kind of a fun community event. Um, sorry, I'm reading my notes of what I put in here. Um, Jen and I met with a playground vendor. Um, so Chris has graciously allowed us to kind of um, meet with vendors and Jen's been working to coordinate kind of what the new playground would look like based on kind of what we anticipate being able to afford. Um, and so we did meet with somebody and we're hoping to have sketches in for that within the next two weeks. We've not given our ideas, they've, they've seen the playground and know the measurements and whatnot. Um, so and they know kind of the ballpark of what we're looking to say within or hoping to stay within. So hopefully we'll have some good information about kind of what we'll be able to get and more to come on from that in the coming months. Um, so I didn't, um, so right now, um, including school of choice money, we have $161,500 as of right now. Um, so more next month on that. Um, the only other thing that I included in here 
is there had been some discussion. I'd heard from I'd heard from several different parents um, that are kind of working either with me in the fundraising group as well as outside of the fundraising group that some donors, and these are some of the bigger donors, not 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 the smaller ones, that really are looking for something, um, some form of recognition that's more than just a social media post or um, a verbal recognition at kind of the opening. And so there was a lot of discussion back and forth about, you know, well, what would people like to see? Um, and so we were hoping to take a look at, I don't know if you're able to see my slide yet today, um, but we're hoping to take a look at not naming it, it, it the ground after anything. We don't want to name a slide or anything like that, but we would like to consider um, if the school committee is willing to approve having some form of um, lack of appreciation, something small and tasteful, but allows businesses to be able to have it recognized um, or potentially even large um, uh, family donors or, you know, prominent families in town that have donated a good amount of money. Um, just something to recognize. And in general, I know we don't do a lot of this. Um, in, in general, we've got a lot of the same businesses and people that give a lot of money um, every time we do a project. And they're very generous and very, very appreciative for all of that. Um, and so, you know, I, I kind of talked it over with some of these parents and um, I think it would be nice to be able to recognize um, some of these donors, even if it's something that we haven't done maybe on a consistent basis in the past. Um, it doesn't mean that we couldn't find a way to tastefully recognize them going forward. Um, I put on this slide as well, so it looks like, you know, obviously this, this group looks a little bit different um, for when the school was built, but even something like the climbing wall. So something smaller that would be able to recognize donors um, on there. On my document, I had put for donations over 10,000. Um, you know, I, I guess that could be up for discussion if people feel very differently about amounts or whatnot, but just being able to give that recognition. And I know that hasn't been discussed yet, on the fields either, but maybe it's something we could discuss, especially with again, the same groups of people. You know, Steve Lewis is always very gracious. CPA is always very gracious. Board of Trustees is always very gracious. Um, and something that just has a name, it doesn't have to be named after somebody, but just something that just has some form of recognition, appreciating the continuous support. So I guess I'm asking the school committee to allow for um, an adjustment to the donor recognition to allow for a plaque on the recognizing them. Thank you, Tara, for um, the update and the presentation um, and the um, the provocation that we might want to consider ways to recognize donors. My, um, I see a hand, and Chris, I'll get to you in just a moment. Um, I think what I uh, my instincts are. Um, because this is a new proposal that we um, give ourselves some time to think about the ways that we might want to recognize uh, it. And I love what you've proposed. And I also appreciate that we have a long list of donors for a lot of very important projects. So I want to be really thoughtful in how we approach this. And I want to decide soon, but not like right tonight. I want us to have a chance to think about what those options might be and, uh, that we talk it over, um, uh, uh, you know, th that we talk it over at a at a, at at our next meeting is what I would say, like with Ethan back um, as well. I, um, but in principle, I really agree that we should find a way to acknowledge our donors, and um, and though, of course, the devil's in the details. So let's find a way to do that. Um, uh, in a way that's sustainable in light of how much contribution there is and how many people we are recognizing. Um, Chris, Steen, Pip, I'm going to call on you first. So, yeah, I, I just am wondering um, what kind of timeline are you looking at uh, in terms of, I know, you know, I don't know 
if you need this, I was going to ask, do you need us to vote on this today? Is this um, something that you need to know going forward in order to speak to those businesses? Because, you know, if we're looking to get the money sooner rather than later, that may be a, an issue. That's I, I guess that's what I'm asking is what's your timeline on this? Um, as far as the project goes, we don't need to have any um, we don't need to have any funds secured um, until the project is, is completed. Um, so for people who are really unwilling to um, give anything without that, I'll tell you there are some there are some people that are really you know looking for something a little bit more and I can appreciate that I can um, and so, but we've been able to make good um, progress on some of these things without having that. Um, obviously, sooner than there is not. But if, if kind of, I would say the general consensus is that, okay, yes, let's find a way to recognize, but maybe, you know, we want to discuss it as a group, what that looks like. It might be enough of a promise to people without knowing exactly what Sounds like Annie might have a thought though. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just going to say that perhaps um, the the sentiment that I'm getting, the feeling I'm getting is that the school committee is very interested as we discussed the field in recognizing all of the various individuals and organizations that have been supportive of the school. So I don't see or hear any resistance to recognizing them. You currently have a policy FF, it's linked into the agenda. What it states now is that um, when there's an opportunity to name it, it, although it says facilities, it also says structures, that the submission of a name for a school space or structures fall under this may be made by any resident or by the superintendent um, in writing and should be made to the school committee chair. All that to say that if folks, if there are folks that were thinking like, let's consider um, recognizing people, whether it's, as you said, a plaque at this level or whatever that is, um, we can put that on the April agenda and everybody can discuss it. And um, I think the message to people is the school committee, it's not a question of whether or not the school committee wants to recognize people who have been generous. It's just making sure that we follow our own policies and how we do it and that we're consistent across the board. But I've already added it to a draft April agenda. That would be helpful to the committee. Um, and maybe also in addition to that, um, having which you've already done some of that like suggested at this level this you already have all that but what is the actual physical thing and where might it go and i wonder annie if you wouldn't mind just asking around to some trusted superintendents to sure. find out what other districts have done in this instance um beyond the plaque which you know that old trusty plaque it's you know who wants to receive a plaque really but i mean something in the hallway super, you know, nice and very, uh, you know, it can be elegant, but is everyone reading the plaque? Is really, is that the best we can do? Um, and I'm not a fan of naming, so I'm not suggesting that we even think about going down that road, but what are other things that you could do that are super meaningful and symbolic and give the donor the recognition that they deserve? Um, thank yeah. you. I like, I think there's a nice example. There is one where it's actually in on the next page where it's part of the playground. Um, you know, something like that I think is nice where it's, it's actually part of the playground. Um, and, you know, the community can, can see it and uh, it's not sort of hidden away, you know, in the building, but actually part of the structure I think is kind of nice. I will say we have about 15 donors for the field, I think, and there was just a recent uh, large private uh, donation as well. It's, it's not ripe to mention here, but there were still getting donations actually for the field. Um, people, as you said, Tara, just incredibly generous businesses. We have uh, Lily Stiebler's Subaru contributed to the athletic fields as well, and then the climbing wall. This is at least the third donation to the schools that I can think of. And it's just amazing, right? So I agree with you, Humera, let's be thoughtful. I and mean, then we'd always along, and, and I'm looking back at our don donor spreadsheet for the fields. It goes back to January of 2018. 
and we were talking to people then that they would be recognized. And we just haven't. We had a temporary recognition while the first phase was complete. Now we're in the second phase. So the timing's right to, to say how we're going to do this. Great. I would welcome your thoughts too. So that conversation that we have in April, I'd like it to be a broader conversation so that we can make sure to address the field's opportunity as well. And to mirror that all that tapping was, I just sent it out to the superintendent list, or can we be more creative than a plaque in this or something short of <laughs> naming particular pieces after people I'll bring that information back. Terrific. Thank you. Just to go full circle, if I can, to Chris um, commenting on kind of the timeline, I think that with this, I can at least go back to the group and say, yeah, school committee is, is very supportive and we just want to make sure that we're able to consistently and having kind of a common way that we make that recognition. But it sounds, though, that we're all on the same page, that there will be something physically there. And that in and of itself satisfies people's kind of wants, right? So I like a, yeah. a public permanent recognition is what I, Exactly. For. Yeah, is what they're yeah. looking for. And so it sounds like that is something we'll talk about, whatever that may be, maybe right. not a plaque or whatever it is some form of public permanent recognition. I I um I want to be open minded that it could be something physical but it maybe it's not something physical. I just want to be I don't want to um shut down our options of what a non physical thank you would look like uh just in the event that we come across something that is also pretty profound. It I um so we definitely want to do some form of recognition. We want it to be special. We've got three different projects that we're thinking about, at least at least two different projects. Um, and we're, we should all put out our feelers and, and our thinking caps, if you will, um, and be ready to talk about some options in April. Oh, okay. <laughs> you, Mary, I'm sorry, you lost me on the non-physical. What, what do you mean by non-physical options well um i mean in my world of uh receiving major gifts and donations in the academic world uh our thank yous look different uh to our donors um they they do not result in a plaque and some of those thank yous are pretty special and uh so what I don't want to do is shut off our brainstorming abilities and preclude us from thinking bigger if, in fact, there is a an option that is bigger. Um, so I might not know what that bigger option is at this moment, but I just don't want to stifle our thinking by saying, well, it has to be a physical object. I will say, too, that we could wrap in there, too, for the fields, at least, a groundbreaking ceremony. I think we should plan that as well. I, put it myself That's exactly I, I totally agree your big picture thinking here, Mary. Whenever you push us to do that, we always come up with something better. So willing definitely to, to, to be in your hands on that. I, I will say some folks have come to us and said, hey, can I name this? Can I name this? Because that's how that's how we think, right? That's the pattern. So, yeah. And that is reserved for like, I mean, naming is just a really big deal in, in the world of giving and uh and there's so much. Yeah, but we're not academics. I mean, we're not ten million dollar hospitals. We're not. But even you know, even like even to commercialize to to have some a commercial name in an academic setting, even with uh, our and that's, that's we have several in memory of professional. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's let's think about this. This is this is a great conversation. Thanks. Yes, and thank you, Tara, for helping us. Um, you know, get there. Thank you. Nice. All right, um, we are, let's see, just reviewing our agenda items. Uh, District Policy FF, uh, the, the, sorry, that was the naming one that you yeah. pointed us to. Uh, so we're on to item seven and I don't believe, no. No, no executive no, session. Executive session yeah. is needed. Uh, our next meeting date is April 22nd. There will be a policy subcommittee meeting at 4.30 after which our regular school committee meeting will be held at 5 30 p.m um do i hear a motion to adjourn so I, move my, <laughs> my my dog molly is concurring with with both of you i think she just thirded the motion um 
All in favor. Bye. Bye.